Hello, I'm Sherry Singer. Welcome to Las Vegas City Scene. A look at your city government beyond the public meetings from the perspective of the men and women providing our benefits and services. Some good news if you need to get your passport, and you may just need one. And if you're looking for entertainment this spring, we've got your ticket and at a reasonable price. But first, a look at a city employee with a very colorful job, literally. In 1997, Marcus Tracy came to work part-time for the city's Office of Government and Community Affairs, affording him a unique opportunity to cultivate his knowledge and passion working alongside the community to expand public projects as an artist. They had this uh, event called Day in, the Arts Dis Day in the Arts District, and the Day uh, in the Arts District basically was a, an event that the city put together with um, uh, the nonprofit organizations within the Arts District and along with that they wanted to do a mural and so I was brought on board to do this mural in about three days so I had a, about a week to put this together in the Arts, the Las Vegas Arts Commission um, actually um, uh, uh, actually approved the design and, 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 and I was able to uh, from that point on I got the paint ready and they got the community members involved and we started painting and it was really a great event during that event basically we had community members come out and they started painting and thinking and taking part of this this uh, mural project so it was really a great involvement and the city also saw that as a success as well and with that being a success they thought that that doing mural projects was a great way that they could kind of unify the city and the community at large to to identify their, their identity within the city where they live and um, how they could uh, uh, bring people together to get to know each other. That the true beauty of these public projects is far beyond what meets the eye really took hold in 2005 because unifying communities with identity and history was the very vision of the city's centennial committee. Marcus was brought on board full time as the art director of a special project to celebrate our 100th birthday. After all, if a picture's worth a thousand words, Imagine the value of 100 murals towards chronicling our city's young history. So the city basically wanted to commit to do 100 murals in one year for the 2005 event, which of course means that meant that the city was turning 100 years, and so they wanted to do 100 murals. So I thought that was a huge challenge. How do you attract a large-scale mural project uh, such as 100 murals in one year, so you really have to do a lot of networking. You really have to get to know more than one community, but many communities in Las Vegas and cultural centers and nonprofit agencies and for-profit uh, facilities. And, and it was really a great partnership with so much. And as an example, this year at the Rafael Vera Community Center, this project was done by Aragu, which uh, he's originally from Mexico, and he did this project as part of the Centennial 100 Murals Project. And this is one of many. And he did such a fantastic job kind of co uh, correlating with the history of Las Vegas and this immediate surrounding area, as well as uh, the, the, the cultural, this historic um, backgrounds of a lot of people who live in this part of the community. And uh, it was probably one of the most dynamic projects. And what's just very interesting and very rewarding about this at the VREN, at the end of 2005, we actually were able to accomplish 180 murals rather than 100 because we really helped closely with the public school and there's so many people that just jumped on board and wanted to do a project it was just overwhelming response so it was really worked out very well. More recently another project that worked out well didn't have quite the same wiggle room if you will in terms of planning. Part of the upcoming May 10th episode of ABC's Extreme Home Makeover Show taped here in Las Vegas last month includes a mural project spearheaded by the city with a nexus to the featured family. The wife was a, or is a mural painter, and so the city really wanted to do a mural project. And it's not so much about paying homage to her in general, but also paying homage to the arts district and its, um, and, and its uh, lively arts production that has been going on in the last 10 years. And I really spoke to the director and the producer that the Arts District basically would be the greatest or probably the best place 
to do a mural project which would open the show and I knew with the resources of uh, uh, working with the Office of Cultural Affairs we were able to kind of tie in a site an artist and have all the materials ready for this mural to be painted basically in about a day and a half or so. We offered the director and the producer like five different possible sites that they could choose from. And so basically I had uh, taken digital photographs of those sites and um, they decided on the site. So they chose actually the location um, of Coolidge and First Street. It's the old mission building, a uh, laundry building uh, across from the Arts District. And uh, there was four artists that I contacted. Within hours I contacted them and one decided to commit to do it and that was Jerry Misco. Jerry Misco basically planned the mural, the mural project, it, it implemented, designed, and had it approved by the following day. Um, uh, his artwork basically speaks of Las Vegas, especially with his neon signs and his kind of abstract images with color that the, uh, that the neon signs emit, especially in the evening. And so this basically, the Welcome to Las Vegas sign is shown as an example of the type of work that he does in the evening. So it really enhances, with the back background, enhances those signs uh, neon uh, um, uh, luminosity and I think that uh, Jerry did a fantastic job in putting that together as well as with the community. Again you'll get to see the fruits of that labor along with the rest of the country on May 10th. But not everything a cultural affairs specialist does is as high profile as a centennial celebration or is nationally televised for that matter. In fact we sent field producer Steve Horlock out to ride shotgun for a better glimpse beginning with the Marble Manor Project, an impressive partnership of diverse members with a purpose. And it's the uh, Las Vegas Housing Authority, the City of Las Vegas, and the Metro uh, Bolden Command uh, participated. Uh, basically, we all did a kind of a partnership in, 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 in uh, trying to find ways to mediate uh, gang violence and graffiti. We looked at this as a great strategy for our department to, to make a difference in the community where we know that the arts really plays an integral part in identifying with the community and make dialogue between the, the, the community, the artist, as well as those people and, and the city of Las Vegas. We also brought on board a um, urban planner or an architect to think about outside of the mural project, how can you uh, change the location, specifically the park or the children's playground, into a safer area for people to, to come out, uh, young kids to come out to play. How are you doing? Give me five. <laughs> what was great about this project too is that the architect Ann Johnson did redesigned this. This is was it just a just a, a wall, and uh, she thought this idea of integrating this this kind of doorway this entryway into the community center uh, was really a great addition because the kids basically that um, uh, if they were in the community center and wanted to go to the to the playground they would have to walk all the way around either side of the building rather than um, uh, rather than going through so we thought wow let's let's do something that integrates this community center and the playground a lot better now this is going to give us future opportunities to do mural projects too so we kind of left this wall open and other walls around the area open because we don't want this to be just a project but possibly a program for the city where we can implement other programs such as mural projects within the community to create workshops and I think those ideas of, of workshops kind of ties in beautifully with the community and its relationship with the city of Las Vegas. And that community relationship has generated even more giving and involvement beyond those original partners. And, and just a list of wonderful volunteers that, that um, uh, as a matter of fact, Norm Sheeling and Sheeling uh, Horror Culture also helped out to revitalize the area with new plants and shrubbery uh, in, a cre in a kind of desert scape uh, community uh, that he created in his staff. And there's so many lists of wonderful volunteers that participated. I could, could spend all day uh, listing those names, but the, but it was such a great partnership uh, that we did. And it uh, we're basically having a, a kind of a unveiling uh, in April that basically showcases the mural, the landscape, and the architectural um, 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 changes that took place over the period of a, of a year. So it was really a fantastic 
event for us and uh, a very rewarding event also because there are active programs happening as we speak. Kids are out playing and really enjoying themselves. And, and so I love this kind of wonderful opportunity to, to work with the city this way. Again, it, it's, it's a great tie-in, and, and I think that this is a, uh, another opportunity or example that I'd that, uh, love to showcase um, uh, to, the, to the community of Las Vegas. To say the tasks of the city manager's Office of Government and Community Affairs, or that the position of cultural activity specialist is wide-ranging, is a major understatement. Regardless of whether it's after-school programs for children or public projects with national acclaim, the department's efforts go far beyond what the eye can see, delivering a sense of ownership and purpose to communities, bringing people together, and making us realize that we're all participating right now in our city's legacy. I think what's really important is that it's, the city really feels as a municipal agency to work with the community directly and sometimes that we, actually the city feels that that you could do that through public projects and working as a as a, as a, as a team working together as, as a team within the community really brings people together within the community and that's basically the service of what the city is all about especially the Office of Cultural Affairs and, uh, and I think that that's, that's the key, is that we do want to know what the, what's happening within each community, and we feel that arts plays such an integral part of that relationship in understanding the needs of the community and what we can do in servicing those, those needs. And um, I, I can't know of anything that's much better than a, a public project, because, a public project, because it really um, offers a chance where people get to know each other, get to know their neighbors, uh, get to know what we do and the services that we provide for the community and I think with that as a whole is just an, an encompasses so much for people to, uh, to, to identify with, its, with themselves and with, this, and, and with the city of Las Vegas. If you'd like more information about the murals and other community projects visit the website artslasvegas.org or call 229-4613. Local kids are brightening up an eyesore near the University of New Mexico. The elementary and middle school kids are painting a mural on a 200-foot-long fence in front of the site for UNM's new bookstore. You may remember the controversy this fall about cutting down trees for that bookstore. The idea of the seascape kind of brought a very neutral ground to all of this. For yeah. one thing, it didn't bring up an issue of um, in, 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 in environmental. It's not a protest thing. It's very educational. The painting is of an ocean scene with dolphins and whales. Artists are expressing their inner selves by way of the New Directions program, as Brian Willett explains. What do you think? Perhaps a work by Matisse, Cezanne, Picasso? Nah. How about a Nathan, a Winston, or even an original Tiffany? Hosted by the Reed Whipple Cultural Center, these creations are the work of 11 to 13 year old artists who are part of the New Directions program. New Directions is a early intervention program through Clark County Family Youth Services. However, we have partnered with the City of Las Vegas and a professional artist and the Reed Whipple Center to allow these kids the opportunity to spend a day each week working on the arts, the visual mediums, the painting and ceramics and so forth. The way it got started was simply that we approached the city knowing that they had the uh, Reed Whipple Center, Center, that there was a lot of art uh, interest uh, within the city's uh, Department of Parks and Leisure uh, activities and they responded uh, positively to our overtures. And since it's about kids and uh, kids don't care where they get in trouble, it's the kind of partnership that makes a lot of sense. Making sense making time and making a place for kids who have been in trouble is just part of the job that art instructor Marcus Tracy does in this program. What we are seeing today is a development, basically a, a, de, uh, uh, a process. What we're doing is, uh, it's not really like an art program, it's more of a developmental program where kids will experiment with arts. And the arts basically is the tool where the kids can build up um, self-esteem, their character, um, intuitiveness and um, what it's all about is, is uh, kind of um, showing that they can have a say in life. And have a say they did as the children were there to explain their own creations. What does the box mean? 
stuff I like and about my family. So you got Quasimodo me. The motto? Yeah. It's like, I put it on there because I like cars. It was a racing car, but I ain't picking sticks now. I got really creative about it, and I got to use whatever I want, and whenever I want, bring it from home, and it's got really creative. I miss the surrealism and everything, so I just put a little bit of this, a little bit of that, some lines, paint, and negatives, and string, and beads, and everything, and a bunch of sequins on the side. And then I, I put a bunch of pictures that really mean something to me. This exhibition does more than just add new art to Las Vegas's cultural life. It puts new life into the self-esteem of the artists. I mean, just to get those kinds of accolades, boost their self-esteem, makes them feel like they're uh, worth something and that they can produce a work of art that is enjoyed by other people, it's a tremendous uh, boost to their uh, self-image. As the images on the wall showcase the talent of these kids, it also shows them hope. And who knows? Even Picasso started someplace. For City Beat, I'm Brian Willett. Life is short, but art is long. A message some Wilson Middle School students embraced when art programs were cut for many of the city's public schools. These students are using their imaginations to fill the void those cuts created and are also using their imaginations to get a handle on art for art's sake. This is a collaboration of kids that their idea is about living here in Albuquerque and they wanted to make sure that it was a, um, a mural that uh, had a lot to do with their surroundings. The Natural High program at the University of New Mexico sponsors these budding artists. Ten week program will be complete on Monday. Great, good for them. We are all at time for now. See you at 10. Hey, hi, and happy Monday to you all. I'm here at the Washington Middle School, which you can see behind me, in the Washington Middle School Park. And no, we're not here to look at the school. We're here to look at this mural, this big, beautiful, wonderful mural. It is the biggest mural in the state, and it's called Learning to Grow. And this whole week, we're going to tell you about who made it, how it got here, who painted it, how much paint, how big it is, and a whole lot of other cool facts about this beautiful mural. So you know what to do. Stay tuned. And I'm here with Barbara Grothis. Welcome to the Fox Kids Club. Hi, thanks for letting me be here. Tell me a little bit about your part in this beautiful mural. Well, we started out with a garden project earlier this year. We started growing a garden at the school. And then this summer, we decided we would have a mural project, too. And so we asked the kids, let's do a, a mural about the garden. And so that's what we did. So the mural actually has a theme. What's the mural called, and what's the theme? Well, the name of the program is Learning to Grow. And so that's the name of the mural, also Learning to Grow. And the theme behind the mural is, uh, well, it's a community-based idea, sort of a multicultural theme, and um, it's basically just about being happy and proud of the things that we grow and the things we do together. Terrific. And um, when we come back, we'll talk more about the mural and about the kids that worked on the mural and all that good stuff. So we'll be back with more right after this, so stay tuned. We're back and we're still talking about the Learning to Grow mural project and I thought we better go right to the source. Here's the artist, Mark Tracy. Welcome, Mark. Welcome. How are you? I am wonderful. You are working on this big and beautiful mural and how long have you been working on it? I've been on it for about, actually the community has been on it for about seven months. And you've been on this ladder for seven months? Well, not really. <laughs> not really. I heard that this is the biggest mural in the state. Am I right? So far it is. It's the largest wall mural in the state. How many, how many miles long is it? Well, I'll tell you, I don't know the miles, but it's three, uh, it's 250 um, feet length and 16 feet high. Wow. Wow. I'd say that's about 474,000 inches. I'd put that together. Yeah. How's that? Anyway, oh, how many right. gallons of paint? We used about 35 gallons of paint so far. Wow. When we come back, we'll find out how many hands put that paint on this wall, so you know what to do. Stay tuned. back. 
we know how long the mural is, and we know how many cans of paint the mural took, but how many hands did it take to paint it? Who was here? Well, it was uh, Barbara, Michael, and also 15 to 20 kids were here also. 15 to 20 kids, Barbara and Michael, 15 hands, that's 30 hands, uh, and that's six, and that's 36 hands! 36 hands got to put paint up on this beautiful mural wall. How's that for quick counting? Was it right? Hey, we're back, and we're still talking about the Learning to Grow Mural Project. And Barbara, tell us who's behind this mural. The funding came from the Albuquerque City Council, which funds the Mid-School Initiative, and this is from Washington Mid-School Initiative, and also from Keep Albuquerque Beautiful. And the project was set up by members of the neighborhood who are involved, the neighborhood associations who are involved in the Mid-School Initiative at Washington. And not only that, but the kids at Washington Mid-School drew these pictures that went up on this wall, and we'll find out more about that after this, so stay tuned. Hey, we're back, and we're still standing in front of the Learning to Grow mural. And tell me, Barbara, a little bit about the actual kids that got to work on this. They're kids just like you, and how did they get involved? Well, they came to school, first of all. They came and found out we were doing it, and we advertised it at the school and told them we were doing it, offered opportunities for them to come and draw and participate. And we worked every day on the drawing, Monday through Friday in the morning from 9 until noon. And lots of kids came down and drew, and we talked as we drew about the kinds of things we could put together and how we would make it work in one long story. Now, this story is about learning to grow, and it's about the four seasons the mural turned out to. So how did you actually pick the pictures and tie them all together? Well, we try, first of all, we tried to figure out a way to tie the whole concept of learning to grow together. And so we have the corn that goes sort of through the seasons. And then we talked about the kinds of things that happen in each different season. So that's how it worked. Wow, this is one heck of a scary part of a mural. Now, I know this mural is about the four seasons and learning to grow, but what are these guys about? Well, this is about the Day of the Dead, actually, and during that time, it's uh, the fall in uh, Mexico. That's when they celebrate it. Is that like so, Halloween? Similar, yes, it is. It's similar to Halloween, so that's why we have these colorful creatures up here. <laughs> skeletons, these actually. These skeletons. <laughs> now, um, they're very beautiful. Did you paint them yourself? Oh, I did, and the kids did. We had about 15 to 20 kids here, and they actually designed on the, um, the skeleton and then the design of the shirt and the pants and the dress and the apron and the guitar. The kids did that. So that was something that they, they thought of, and so well, I helped them with drawing it. But they were the ones who colored it in with the paint, so it was their choice. It sure was. It's very beautiful, <laughs> might I say. Thank you for that. Anyway, we'll be back with more on this beautiful mural project right after this, so stay tuned. back and we're taking a painting break with coordinating muralist Mark Tracy and Mark we've come all the way to almost the end of the mural and we're here at this beautiful season what is this one this is the winter season and what we have here behind us is uh, Sadako and the paper cranes it's two cranes and what that does uh, those two represent the uh, sign of peace Sadako is the little girl who was diagnosed with leukemia in the winter right. like the winter of the painting and that was the peace statue that we talked about a couple weeks ago down at the Albuquerque Museum now what else can you tell us about this mural well, we also have here is a Navajo uh, seed pot and seed pots are very traditional um, in, in, in the native culture to uh, what they do is they put seeds in the pot during the winter season for the next season what it does is it keeps the rodents from going into the pot and taking the seeds out so that's what it's all about, and the designs represent all the bugs and so forth during the winter. We'll be back with more on this mural after this, so you know what to do. Sit back and stay tuned. Hey, we're back, and we're still looking at this mural, and Barbara, this part of the mural looks a little bit different. What's the difference on this part right here? Well, this part was done with spray cans. We had a spray can artist, Michael Lipiotis, who worked with us, and he was one of the coordinators for the program, for this particular part of the program, Learning to Grow, and this is his spray can art. So he didn't use a paintbrush here at all, he only used a spray can. Now, isn't that what's used in graffiti? Well, yes, and um, actually Michael's interested in helping graffiti artists become real artists and actually use their spray can interests and their talent with the spray can for beneficial purposes like this. Something as beautiful as this, and I can't believe he did this with a spray can. Amazing, isn't it? Yes, it sure is. We'll be back with more on this mural project 
the longest mural in the state, right after this, so you know what to do. Sit back and stay tuned. Well, that's about all our time for this week, but I hope you enjoyed learning about the Learning to Grow mural here at the Washington Middle School Park, and I hope you'll come down and check it out. It's on 10th Street, just a little bit south of Central, right at the corner of 10th and Park, and it's right behind Washington Middle School. So look for the school, look for the mural, and check this thing out, because it is the most biggest, most beautiful mural in the entire state. And until next week, you know what to do. Get out there and paint a big old mural. is giving them help with their homework and it's also giving them some creative ways to stay out of trouble. Colleen May has their story. Ted is just one of many at-risk teens who is brushing up on his art skills instead of spending time on the streets. Gives me a little more self-confidence. People don't recognize me for bad grades and they say, oh, it's Ted, he got bad grades. It's no, it's, hey, it's Ted, he turned his grades around. He's getting good grades. He's being a good kid again. I like that. Ted and the other kids here are taking part in an after-school program called New Directions. Yeah, it's, uh, not Funded by the state and county, it's an alternative for kids on probation. Instead of going to a youth camp or state training center, the judge can order at-risk teens to this nine-month program. I think it's uh, really helped me out. You know, before I came on this program, I was getting, I wasn't getting two real good grades at all, D's and F's, but now I'm on here and I'm getting C's and B's and they're still coming up. This is a good program. If it wasn't for this, I'd be in juvie, like locked up. These kids are working with an artist to create a mural for the front of the Reed Whipple Cultural Center. It looks good, just like that. Perfect. It gives them also um, a sense that they uh, uh, are doing good for themselves as well as for the community, a uh, sense of awareness to who they are. I think uh, self-esteem building too has a lot to do with that. And when it's done, these kids will have an everlasting reminder of the work that they did. Put a lot of work into it. It's going to look real good. Colleen May, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. The relationship between the kids and the adults involved in the program doesn't end after the nine-month program is over. Many of the adults stay in touch and continue to offer guidance and support. Tonight, local youngsters are getting the opportunity to make a fresh start. A program is giving at-risk juveniles the chance to change their ways. The New Directions program, as it's called, is teaching kids ages 10 to 13 about leading healthy and productive lives. Their latest project includes redesigning the 20-year-old mural in front of the Reed Whipple Center. Organizers say the task teaches kids the rewards of positive actions and helps increase their self-esteem. In addition, the community will reap the benefits of all their hard work when the mural is unveiled later this month. I got these books right here from the river last week. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you these books to look at, to share. Mm -hmm. I looked at the books, and I want you to get ideas from the books. In the books, there's a lot of murals, okay? Murals that talk about almost everything, okay? Look at the colors, look at the designs, look at the murals, see if they're fun, exciting, okay? And that's what we want to do. We want to make our mural very exciting, okay? If you feel confident and you're ready to start drawing, I'm you have a boy. choice. And that's right, raise your hand if you want to say something. Now, we're, there's a lot of painting to do, okay? What I want you to do is decide what you would like to paint, okay? Right now for one second, and then raise your hand when you're ready, and then I'll, then I'll answer your question. For those people so far that I mentioned, what would you like to paint? Flower? Okay, you can finish that up. Too. What would you like to paint? She's going to paint the shark. Yeah. The yellow also? She's going to no. paint the shark too. Okay, you can do that too. Yes. She's going to paint two pieces. Okay, also, right behind you too, that needs to be painted too, okay? So let's do this. The people who have 
I, uh, the people who, who pointed the things they want to paint out, stand up right now and pay you the thing we use this year, okay? And carry this over there and be very good. Remember about using the paintbrush, okay? Go ahead. Got it? What happens if you don't? Okay. What did you say you want to paint? Okay. Yep. Come on the apple. Okay, come over here. Like you want to paint that? Okay, come over here. something you can do. largest mural in the state of New Mexico. Some kids from Wilson Middle School and Washington Middle School working on the white cranes in the seed pot. There's the girl standing in the fall season holding the corn. I will. This is Marcus Tracy. What's that? Este vato thinks he knows it all right there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. People. He's waving. Him and his hair are both waving goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Ricky Joe? Ricky! Ricky, don't run from the camera. Where are you at? I hear him laughing, but I can't see him. There he is. There's Ricky Joe. America's... <laughs> America's most wanted. Ricky Joe is a very fine mural painter here. Both of them actually, I'm just teasing Marcus. He's also a very fine mirrorless when he's not over there acting kind of funny. And then there's a guy, I don't know who he is, but he's working on the project. It's summertime day. here. And right here in this blank space, that's where uh, the day of life is going to be. And this guy over here wearing the pilgrim shirt, he's the, he's uh, quite unfinished, like the rest of the mural kind of 
experimenting around with it um, before we got the color quite down. And this guy standing in the summertime, spring and summer. There's one of the kids on the project running the crazy and the river. Oh, and the golden carp over there was not quite golden yet. Sacrificing, it's about sacrificing like desires and shit, you know? Sacrificing yeah. shit that that's like important. Right? Like it's a sacrifice to be out here painting instead of being out there drinking and bullshitting and Is it like is it like a fasting type of sacrificing? Yeah, fasting would be sacrificing. But not cutting out someone's heart. I don't believe in that shit. I don't even need meat. Oh yeah. yeah. And up there, it's talking about the cielo, like heaven, the boy. But it's not done yet. I'm gonna do like a flower and a circle. Up there. Okay, can we see the actual picture you're doing? Yeah, I get it. Check it out. This is a Xerox copy of the actual picture. But it's not going to be black and white, it's going to be colored. This middle piece is going to be black and white, and this is going to be uh, more red, you know, like bright red, and it's going to be more like that, you know, like mm -hmm. green, like corn, real corn. And then this flower is going to go up there like that. Yeah. You'll probably see it better against the wall, I don't know. And the flower will be up there like that. On the what top. does that flower represent? Represents like balance. Represents balance. Represents balance. Yeah. All right. Like enlightenment. And then this part above that. This What's is... that? An eyeball? No, that's balance too. That's a balance. Yeah. So well, at least you're cool. not square. Is that what it means? Yeah, it means don't be square, huh? <laughs>